but uh, let's talk about like the differentiation between uh, like the world safety world and the sports climbing norm. So uh, for for our uh, like followers to uh, to get the point between the two norms. So is then from your perspective a sports climbing norm unsafer in combination or in comparison with a uh, an industry norm? What would you say? Totally not. No. Hey everyone, my name is Jacob and today we're going to do a new episode of Warrior Talk. Uh, I'm currently at the premises of the company Edelried, uh, which is a German PPE, so personal protective equipment and climbing gear manufacturer located also in Bavaria, nice Bavaria. And with me uh, is Felix and Felix, he's the expert on norms uh, uh, like what is required uh, uh, in terms of uh, for you guys to fulfill your job and today we're going to talk a little bit about the differentiation of norms so sports climbing norms versus industry climbing norms and Felix is with me if you just uh, can give the audience a short introduction to yourself and what you're doing in the company sure hey guys I'm Felix I'm uh at Edelrit, uh, responsible for the authorities range, we call it, authorities products. Um, it is a part of our cu customer solutions department, geared towards special construction, special PPE, special braidings, like for example, paragliding lines, but also um, special constructions in harnesses, lanyards, and stuff like that, and that's my day-to-day -day business. Okay. And that's where Lindnerhof also came in, into play a few years ago. Yeah, so uh, you might not notice, um, just a short wrap up, uh, uh, what the story is behind the cooperation of Lindnerhof and Edelried. Um, so they specify in or, or specialize in, um, in, in, as I said, personal protective equipment and climbing gear, but not necessarily have a dramatic uh, input in terms of uh, special operations background and stuff like that. So uh, that's our task in the cooperation. So we um, give inputs in terms of designs, functionality, um, what it should do, what it uh, should not do, uh, the gear. And we recently uh, developed together a new set of uh, tactical climbing equipment, which uh, I will introduce to you in the following videos. So stay tuned for uh, other videos, which are called product DNA in the future. So. Since we are in Bavaria and it's a little late today, so uh, we start the day with a uh, yeah, nice beer. Yeah. Thanks for serving this. Yeah. Prost. Enjoy. I unfortunately have to correct you there right away. We are not in Bavaria anymore. Oh, the border is like... Uh, yeah, like... A, it feels like only 10 meters. <laughs> okay, but, but, but there is one. We are okay. in Baden-Württemberg yeah, already. We consider but, this still yeah, Bavaria, yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our uh, mindset is Bavarian. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. That helps. Yeah. Yeah, that helps a lot. Um, so we see uh, we see in uh, uh, throughout the procurement processes and stuff like that. We see a lot that people look for uh, like the most powerful norms they they can they can draw, bring into like uh, on the table in terms of specifications and stuff. And, and like, what's your perspective on, on, on this approach? Yeah? Do you think it's, it's reasonable? Uh, and and uh, again, what's the difference? So can you talk a little bit about what norms apply for, for the stuff we make together? And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, there are definitely norms which have their reason why they're there. Um, for like climbing harnesses, we mainly speak about two different norms uh, or worlds, I would say. Like on the one side, the, the sports climbing world, um, on in gyms, on uh, rock walls, uh, but also on the high alpines, and on in the other world, we are talking about wor the work safety world. So mm. I usually have big skyscrapers or windmills I have to service, and uh, the big difference there is uh, like usually in work safety I work my way from um, top to bottom mm. so I can take the elevator um, uh, drive up the building and then work my way down and um, so weight is not a big issue there right mm. so um, because I, I can I can use the gravity mm -hmm. uh, on the rope and uh, belay um, but in sports climbing um, weight is definitely a factor right yeah and 
Also a big difference is in, in work safety, I usually work with two ropes, um, one safety backup, one main uh, working line. And in sports climbing, I'm usually uh, moving around in single rope. Technique. Single rope, yeah, right. And if we look at the applications or the, the use of way uh, the, the military forces and special uh, police units are using PPE, it is, I would say, from my experience, is more into the sports uh, side. Absolutely. More, more in the world of, of sports climbing. Um, and uh, also the sports norm is a little bit, um, I wouldn't say easier, but more open to fancy designs mm -hmm. than the, the work safety world. Yeah, so I also made that experience and, and, and what you say is true that uh, like in, in terms of special operations and but also like uh, other, other units that, that, that use ropes or, uh, or climbing gear on a, on a frequent basis like mountain infantry and stuff, it's, it always uh, like during missions, you, you, you cannot have a security rope. Yeah? Yeah. So just to back up what you already set up in terms yeah. of like belay rope system, your, your personal equipment, stuff like that. That's either uh, the tactical scenario does not apply, yeah, because it needs to go fast, yeah, yeah. and and you need to be you need you you, you 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 can't have like clumsy equipment, and that was always like my feelings uh, when I was confronted with like the personal protective equipment, uh, like in work safety, uh, you were mentioning that this is kind of bulky equipment, you know. Of course, it's comfortable and and it holds a lot of force, yeah. But but uh, let's talk about like uh, like the, the 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 differentiation between uh, like the world safety world and the sports climbing norm. So uh, for for our uh, like followers to uh, to get the point between the two norms. So is then from your perspective a sports climbing norm unsafer in combination or in comparison with a uh, an industry norm? What would you say? Totally not. No. Um, as you see, so. Uh, the best proof for a concept is obvious uh, if you look out in the world. So there are like yeah, thousands or millions of <laughs> yeah. climbers out yeah. there who survive every day in yeah. a normal yeah, yeah, yeah. sports climbing certified uh, yeah. climbing harness. Yeah. Um, no, so uh, both systems, uh, the sports, which we talk about the EN 12277, yeah. and uh, the work safety world, which is uh, 361 uh, European standard. Um, they are both, uh, from the strength requirements, way above uh, everything which a human body can cope with. So we yeah. are speaking about 15k uh, kn plus and stuff like that. If you if you take a fall with uh, above 15 kn, yeah, you destroy everything. Yes, your, your bones will yes. not cannot cope with it. Um, in sports climbing, you have a dynamic rope which takes uh, the force and lowers it down. Um, yeah, the maximum force I would say is around 4 kN in sports climbing. Um, in uh, the work safety world, you usually use shock absorbers, which uh, um, limit the the force on the body as mm -hmm. well. And so, from a strength perspective, um, it doesn't make any difference at all. Yeah, that that's also like uh, what I got from from my training. Yeah, in in history and uh, uh, like, is there? Do you think so? So, what's the uh, like, what's the differentiation in terms of material when we when we come when we talk about like the twelve uh, two seven seven like the sports climbing norm yeah. versus the industry norm which is the EN three six nine three six one three six one thanks yeah. thanks for that so do we have any limitations in terms of material we can use which is like uh, for the audience important so from a raw material side not really but yeah um, the three six one for example. Um, tells us to use up to 40 millimeter webbings. Mm -hmm. um, the um, sports standard is uh, way more free there in this kind of uh, perspective. I can, I can show you maybe some two um, crazy examples oh. out of both worlds. That pretty so, much looks like a yeah. <clears throat> tanga. Yeah, <laughs> this is what. Is it, yeah, <laughs> and and this this. This you say this fulfills the sports climbing. Yeah, right? yeah, and most definitely. Okay, so so yeah. I think so everyone gets the point. So completely safe for climbing, for yeah. falling into it. Um, well, it's a super niche product, right? It's uh, the lightest harness out there. Yeah, but at I the like moment, it. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Uh, Dyneema all over the place. So yeah. high strength materials to yeah. uh, ensure that we have a very small, um, yeah. 
product, very uh, you can <laughs> see <laughs> through. <size. laughs> yeah. yeah, great. And on the other side, we have like the work safety yeah. world, the 361, yeah. which usually is also a complete, uh, so a full body harness, right? So I have a, um, a bottom and an upper part. Yeah, you and cannot separate and it's non, usually, not meant to be separated. Yeah, yeah. there are yeah, harness types mm -hmm. out there, but usually you have a full body setup, correct? And uh, you would usually use, use um, the, the upper attachment points in order to keep the body mm -hmm. upright. Upright, yeah. Um, but uh, the, if, you, if you look at the scenarios for sports climbing, you usually fall into the hip. The hip is also the part of the body which can take the most force. And uh, yeah, if you, if you have like in tactical scenarios, especially in the high alpines, you you are uh, looking for being as light as possible Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah, and yeah. that's our our like philosophy to be as lightweight as possible, uh, and 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 just to get the point for everyone. So this is like what Felix, uh, what you were mentioning. This is like uh, yeah. you cannot you cannot be smaller than this. Yeah, Correct. you cannot be uh, like the width. You are limited to forty millimeters at a minimum, uh, in terms of uh, the width of the the webbings, uh, which also then adds extra weight to the buckles yeah, sure. because they need to be bigger also sure. uh, uh, and, and, and this one in comparison where you just say okay um, th 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 this is like uh, and, and, and it's a, I think it's a, it cannot be more clear you know the, the, the comparison between these two products so uh, this is as you said of course an extreme product but yeah I picked but, the, the best example yeah yeah but, but <laughs> uh, I think this is quite catchy because uh, this is like the minimum you can get out yeah. of the, the sports climbing now. Yeah. Correct. And and this is now what 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 I like the most because like our philosophy is also like uh, protection can be speed uh, also not also uh, like definitely. like be be more safe or, yeah. or, be, or be safer in terms of like ballistic protection and whatever yeah. but also like uh, uh, if if your gear the lighter it is the more uh, uh, the more flexible you are and the faster you are yeah. um, okay so. Um, would you say, but but, but uh, I would wanted just to pick up one one sentence you mentioned that uh, uh, like with the the hip harness and and the chest harness. So you were mentioning an industry standard. There's most likely in a hundred percent of the uh, the scenarios in work safety, you always combine uh, a a hip harness with with a chest harness. So I know from my past, um, it was very unpopular to have a chest harness yeah. uh, because it it was a, you were just ah, okay. I have the plate carrier still, I have the long gun maybe, I have a helmet, stuff like that. And then I should add the chest harness also, yeah? And these days, so I was young then, uh, and I can remember we, we, we were always using a hip harness, but now like, like also together with you guys diving deeper into the topic of, of like safety and stuff. So I, I like my, my mindset changed a little bit um, because in sports climbing, you not necessarily have a heavy backpack or have a plate carrier, so additional weight to your upper body, uh, not mentioning the head, where you always uh, like also limited in terms of weight. Uh? Yeah. Climbing helmets, they don't weigh two kilo. Yeah? Yeah. With a tactical helmet, with night vision, stuff like that, you easily end up uh, yeah. at two kilos. And that also adds to your upper body. So what happens? Center of gravity is shifting from from literally I don't know where normally the the belt of the trousers Correct. is like a little up. Yeah. So, and and I was then reflecting. Okay, first impression was just go in the in the direction make a, a, a sexy uh, hip belt and in terms of tactical product. Yeah. Uh, but still, I then came to the conclusion that uh, it adds safety also uh, to have a chest harness. Yeah. Not necessarily, as I said, so I don't like bulky equipment with the industry norm. Yeah. Um, also, like with uh, a sports climbing norm, but but still reflecting that this additional weight yeah, needs to be covered somehow yeah. in terms of safety. Yeah. And, and and of Most course, you, yeah. you, you 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 said the same these days when we were talking about this uh, the, the design of the product. Yeah. Um, but in this case, it's mainly to keep. The body a little bit more upright mm -hmm. and still have the strength um, direction into the hip. Yes. Um, so you wouldn't need like a super bulky and heavy um, chest harness. Um, you can you go very very slim. The sport standard also covers with uh, A B C D 
different types of harnesses so full body harnesses hip harnesses and also chest harnesses and so also the in the sports world we we know and see um, chest harnesses and we can cover also with the sports standards the chest harness yeah and that like chest harness uh that, that's i i wouldn't like push it too much uh, in terms of because you want to give the operator the flexibility to use whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. We, we're just mentioning it. And of course, I can remember also that the, uh, some, some 15 years back when we say, okay, a hip harness does the job with all the extra weight I was mentioning and because we were undestroyable. So you had the <laughs> mindset, so you're pretty much undestroyable. Yeah, yeah, of course, what should happen to me? Yeah. yeah. And at the end of the day, you would not take into consideration that you could get unconscious, you could go get also shot at, and once you like tumble, tumble. 180 yeah. degrees, there's also uh, like a high chance to just slide out of the hip belt. So of course, then yeah. you, you have a yeah. chest harness that also like keeps everything in place and you don't slide out of the hip belt, yeah? Yeah. Just, just, just to mention that. Yeah. Um, so industry norm is, si is still a topic. So uh, it's still in specification stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we fulfill that. So we also should mention that. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, yeah. So with all our harness types we develop together, um, we have no official um, uh, certification according to 361. Mm -hmm. But the technical requirements we completely fulfill. And yeah. this is also internally um, confirmed. Um, so, if someone has uh, like a second thought about uh, if it is the harness fulfilling the same strength like a 361, yeah, it is, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, th and this is uh, like for anyone that needs it. Uh, so, there is a side letter uh, stating Italy that there is internal testing done and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And it fulfills the norm. So, um, uh, what, what would you say? Um, is, is there anything we will do in the direction of the industry norm in the future, like uh, like the future product? So there will also be future products necessarily uh, next year because we have one series of new products that are about to be launched yeah. uh, uh, now. But would you say, um, like like also like from from your perspective as a company, would would you like I don't know consult me in the direction that we should uh, poke our nose into that? Oh, definitely. Or? There is an application for um, the work safety world. Um, for example, like think about cleaning the tank. Mm. Uh, a tank is really really high. Mm. Um, if you above a certain height, you need uh, protective equipment. So there, Which is funnily, one meter. I didn't yeah. know that, but but someone told me, yeah, yeah. when you're above one meter, you should be, I, I think, tied to a rope, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, there you should use protective equipment, but you're not in a tactical world, right? So you don't need to, you probably don't need the, 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 um, the camouflage equipment. Mm. You can use a normal uh, PPE uh, 361 harness mm -hmm. um, because you're somewhere at the base, just cleaning tank. Or like think about um, police units um, bringing down protesters from bridges, trees, mm -hmm. stuff like that. They then work, and also the cleaning teams, they work in a work safety manner. So they work with yes. double rope technique, they work with shop absorbers, etc., etc., and also the police units taking down protesters work with double rope technique. Mm. And then you're completely in the work safety world. And then, yeah, uh, 361 harness, yeah, is definitely the way to go. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. So why should you then use a, uh, because at the end of the day, there's always the trade off, you know, between being super light, yeah, with, with like a product like this. Um, but yeah. you can expect, so how much comfort would you get out of this? Yeah. And, th and this Correct. is this is designed to just save your life. Yeah, this is designed for walking eight hours on a glacier. Yeah, in like 8,000 meters and like super extreme. Maybe w one in 10 years you fall into a crevasse and then it needs to save your life. Exactly. But it so does, need, does not need to be comfortable when hanging in it. And exactly. it's totally different when you are working in the ropes. Then it, you're hanging three, two, uh, two, three hours in the ropes, yeah. in the harness, yeah. then you need big webbings, then you need padding, then you need a comfortable exactly. sitting board maybe also. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and this is where we had to make the trade-off um, with our new product line. 
so we were we were still sticking to uh, to to the sports norm be, because we we believe in slim equipment, right? So it's it's not not getting that slim because uh, so it would be easy to just attach Molly. Of course, it gets a little heavier, but still, yeah. it's a super sexy product. Just yeah. imagine that in like I don't know stone gray or five camo yeah. pattern, multi cam, whatever. Um, but it's not always like this that you need to be super fast. Yeah? Just imagine this police forces out there, so I, I, I talk to a lot of them during the, the research phase when we get into the new product line. Yeah. And there are units that, that say, okay, they stay on the rope for maximum five minutes and then they get the go because their tactics are like set up like this. But I also talk to units, they are like, okay, yeah, we might sit on a rope for like half an hour until we get the go. And then this one is getting a nightmare. Yeah. And, and we don't want to like, overpace in terms of uh, yeah this is like the super sexy lightweight equipment but if you're in there like for a half an hour and you your legs are getting numb so how can you get into the window so there's always a trade-off and yeah. we should mention this um, but still um, still it needs to be in a way that it gives you a kind of comfort and needs to be super light yeah, yeah. but you not necessarily need this when when you know you you go out there on a mission. Let's pick somebody off a bridge. Yeah, yeah, like not with a bullet, <laughs> but but you need to take them down for it. maybe secure them also to yeah. a rope. But because they are like I don't know chained to this bridge or yeah. whatever uh, construction, and then of course you need to be uh, like super comfortable because this can last for hours. You yeah. know, yeah, I don't know three four hours or so easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you need to convince him to go down. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you also need additional. Then you're not talking about uh, lightweight anymore because you need additional slings, anchor points, uh, maybe yeah. uh, a safety harness for lowering the uh, person. Exactly. Because he detached himself for from his harness and yeah. stuff like that. So um, yeah, you you don't need to be super super lightweight. No. Yeah. Um, so is there any? Uh, what would, would, would also be interesting, is there any uh, changes planned in terms of the, the norms world? Like, uh, will the sports norm like stick to what it is for, for the future and the industry norm, will it stick to what it is as of now for the future? Or Well, for these uh, explicit two standards, there's at the moment nothing planned. Um, but yeah, the, for sure, the standards are also evolving. Mm -hmm. So. We have seen some changes, additional standards coming in, for example, um, uh, dynamic attachment slings and stuff like that. Um, and we've also seen the last year's um, standards being uh, kind of updated mm -hmm. and additional requirements added. Um, yeah, so they are constantly evolving, but yeah, it's a, it's a very slow process. It's, uh, European-wide standard, so you can kind of... It's not from like uh, one yeah. month to the other. Yeah. We cannot decide to change it right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we won't get, uh, like in terms of sports climbing norm, uh, so we, we've seen like the, the, the maximum you could get out of it, or in, in, in this case with the, the super light uh, uh, hip belt, like the minimum you can get out of it, but there is nothing planned like to uh, to soften up, uh, I don't know, bandwidths and stuff like in terms of like web, webbing mm -hmm. and everything. So So this is like... As it's, it is, okay. it's set at the moment. So yeah. we are, we are like f also future proof in terms of our product. So we recently did, and uh, we are not. So they are not like uh, I don't know conflicted or inflicted from a, a change of rules uh, like in in the next two to three years. So these are like uh, like made for Definitely. the future, future proof, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, is there anything else uh, you want to mention in terms of like norms and stuff like that? So uh, testing maybe or so. So so how 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 do we do that? How we well testing um, is performed um, on dummies um, for the um, sports um, standard. It's uh, static um, mm -hmm. um, tensioning and braking until the, the, the point, the highest point uh, of, of strength um, in the 361, so the work safety world. We also have a, a dynamic fall test mm -hmm. um, into uh, all attachment points and stuff like that. So we have, uh, in regards of the 361, a, a bigger set of uh, tests we need to perform for mm -hmm. a certification. 
Um, but as we as we said, uh, there's strength wise, it's it's not not a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you've been mentioning uh, the term static and dynamic uh, in testing. Mm -hmm. In testing, so so what's uh, the differentiation? Uh, exactly in terms of testing so it's fairly simple actually static mm -hmm. means uh, you just pull uh, with a certain speed statically on the harness and until an it breaks acapark, until it breaks correct okay. or it needs to hold a certain strength for a certain time for example uh, in the 361 uh, you need it needs to hold 15 kn for three minutes and mm -hmm. other norms as well three minutes is usually the the holding time and dynamic means you have like if you if you think about sports climbing, you climb above your last anchor point and then you lose your grip, fall, mm -hmm. and then you have a dynamic fall into your system, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the dynamic fall. And this is also tested in the work safety uh, standard um, on a fixed anchor point with a certain weight, certain um, length of uh, lanyard and uh, a certain type of lanyard mm -hmm. and that's mainly the difference yeah okay and so from uh, like the use case perspective uh, uh, like the focus should be always like on a dynamic test of course because this would apply in real life also like dropping from somewhere into the harness with a, a huge impact in a very short period of time. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes. But not only, right? Not so only. if you're working on the ropes, mm -hmm. you're statically attached to your ropes. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a dynamic in the system. You don't fall mm -hmm. because you're always under load. Mm -hmm. um, but if you think about a roof worker, so mm -hmm. he works on the roof close to the edge, maybe he's coming, uh, is uh, slipping over the edge, mm -hmm. then he has a dynamic fall into yes. the lanyard or whatever, because the lanyard usually has a little bit of slack, yeah. because you need some space to work with. Yeah. And this is the real life application, yeah. So static um, for like being um, um, constantly under load yeah. and the dynamic for an immediate impact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then the uh, uh, like the audience might ask themselves, so Lindhoff, so okay, so it's uh, it's climbing gear, so uh, okay, you you present the ideas uh, already. Why don't you do it on your own? So uh, we also should mention that that you need to be a certified uh, like production facility to produce that personal protective equipment, right? Can can you like explain a little bit what that means? Correct. Yeah. So maybe the the history of Edelrid started actually this year. We turned 160 years. Um, started out as a braiding company for shoelaces and fishing lines mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it was funny, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fishing lines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And at some point uh, developed the um, uh, Kern Mantel rope as we know it uh -huh. um, right now. And um, at, at these times, nobody wore a harness, right? Uh, yeah, a harness yeah, yeah, yeah. was not uh, was not out there. Yeah. Um, so you tied your rope directly to your body. Yeah, yeah. And you can you can think yeah, that there are no required yeah. uh, <laughs> webbing width and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then at some point, harnesses uh, specifically for climbing were developed and stuff like that. And uh, correct. So as you as you mentioned, um, we are now 160 years old, a PPE producer. Mm -hmm. um, so in in regards of harnesses, um, we are always talking about PPE class three, um, which is like the highest class for personal protective equipment, and you need to be a certified company in order to to um, produce it. And yeah, this is yeah. quite hard to get. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so we uh, and you need to like recertify. Um, yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah. you need to you need to have implemented processes in order mm. to uh, produce. Yeah, PPE. that's also the reason that that's like I I, I don't open uh, like as we say in Germany I I will not open that barrel. Yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. think uh, in regards of yeah. the Lindner of Edelrit uh, Corporation, it's a perfect fit because you bring in the know-how from the field, uh, from the real life and mm. tactic, uh, tactical applications. Mm -hmm. And we bring in the know-how from the work safety exactly. and the sports climbing world, right? Yeah. And uh, this is our expertise. And then we combine both of it into a perfect product. Perfect for the product, customer. as you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, are there any last words you want to... <laughs> You want to oh jeez! What what we have <laughs> planned for the rest of the day? No, yeah, <laughs> just hanging on the rope for a couple of hours. Okay, yeah, perfect. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for uh, hosting me. Yeah, yeah. 
pass by any time and yeah, yeah, cheers mate. Thank you. Cheers. So friends, that was it. Uh, a little deep dive into norms, a little uh, like explanation about what's required uh, in terms of the real world requirements and not, not what's written on paper. Um, it, uh, I think it, it helped you um, just leave feedback. If not, then we, we can also uh, extend this uh, uh, with another video if you want. And uh, stay tuned, um, follow us uh, on all our channels. There are uh, like product DNA videos to come on the products we have like secretly been talking about without showing. Uh, during this video and stay safe. Uh, see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.